go. All right, I'll do this joke again. She gets everything right, and Cirky does. She figured it out. She, her face. By the way, the next unit that we're doing is called Logic and Reasoning. So that was Logic and Reasoning. See, right there. Understanding jokes is part of it, believe it or not. Assuming that these two figures are similar. Now, what that means is they've multiplied this by some number to get all the missing sides, and it's been the same number for each side. They're the same shape. Are they the same size, Zach? Say no. No, but they're the same shape. Similar objects are exactly the same shape. Find the missing measurements. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to find the one set of sides where we have a pair, where we know both of them. I said, you know what? I know this guy and this guy. That's going to be my conversion factor. Big over small equals big over small. And all I'm going to do for the rest of this is it's going to be cross multiplying. I'm going to go like this. Big shape over small shape equals, now let's see, W, what does W go with in the big triangle? 12. Big shape over small shape equals big shape over small shape. How do I solve this equation when I have one fraction equals one fraction? I learned it in grade 8. Cross, multiply, and divide as a matter of fact. It's going to be 10w equals 72, 6 times 12, w times 10. w is going to be 7.2. 7.2 centimeters. One mark. Okay. x. What does x go with in the big shape? 15? So... Big shape over small shape, there's my conversion factor, equals big shape over small shape. How am I going to solve this? Cross multiply. I'm going to get 10x equals 15 times 6, which is 90, I believe. Oh, this one works out evenly. X equals 9. 9 centimeters. Make sense, Nikki? So far, so good? Okay. One of these will be on your test. I don't think it's the first question, but it's on there somewhere. I made up a test last night. Um, why? Because I asked you to. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, why goes with which in the small? Yeah. Now, as long as you get, you get the same answer, don't you? Yeah, the nice thing is you could have gone small over big, small over big. The only issue is what you cannot do is big over small, small over big. You can't mix and match in the same question. You have to have the stuff lining up on the same level. Great question. Uh, I'm going to go, I usually go big over small just because. Actually, you know what I usually do? This one over that one, whichever one came first, because I usually read right to left. 10 over 6 is going to be, uh, y is the big one, y over 2.5. Screen froze? Thank you for telling me. I need to learn how to troubleshoot this thing. Bear with me for one second. Cross multiply, you're going to get y equals 25 over 6. Now I skipped one step. I noticed that it's cross multiply and then divide. I did the divide right away too. That's going to be 25 divided by 6. 25 divided by 6. Well, 24 divided by 6 would be 4 and 1, 6. Is it uh, 4.166 or 4? I think 4.17 if you round off properly, isn't it? I would take 4.2. I would take 4.17. I would not take 4.16. I'd take a half mark off and say round off properly, please. Uh, on the, go ahead. What if you got? Sorry, say that again. Lawyer with me later. Give yourself wrong right now, but lawyer with me later. I need to see what you did, but it's easier just to look at it than trying to understand it from a distance. 
On your test, by the way, I think at the very, very beginning, I say give every answer to two decimal places unless I say different. So if you're not sure, go to two decimal places. Yes? It's not four. It's 4.16666. I'm going to take a half mark off, mister. Yes? So show me later. Mark it wrong right now and lawyer with me later. Uh, Z, it's still going to be big triangle over small triangle. There's my conversion factor. What does Z go with? Z's in the big triangle and it goes with 4. Z over 4. Uh, you're going to get Z equals 40. And then I divide by 6, which is 20 over 3, which is 6.666. So 6.67 I would take. I would take 6.7. 7 is just rounding off way too much. I'll take a half mark off on this one because I'm not counting this quiz anyways, and I'm telling you next time I'll take a half mark off. Any questions on those? Then lawyer with me later. All right. I stole this right from the notes, right from the homework. If we look at, hello, lesson here, scale factors and perimeter. We had a little chart, I think, show me in the homework. Oh yeah, in the notes, right about here. This is fairly similar. I combined it with a couple of charts from the homework, which I think were right about here. Let's take a look at it. Original dimensions, it's a rectangle. The original dimensions are 2.9. How do I find the perimeter of a rectangle? There's two ways to find the perimeter of a rectangle. It's twice the length plus twice the width, or you can just go 2L plus W. Those will both give you the same answer. If you add the length and the width together first and then just double your answer, that's the same as times in the first one by two plus times the second one by two. In other words, nine plus two is 11 times two. 22. Now, I'm going to show you how to mark this in a second. What it's going to be is there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 lines. What's this question out of? 14. Two marks per line, but a half mark off for each square that's wrong. In other words, if you get four of these wrong, you get zero. Uh, this is going to be eight, uh, 36. This is going to be uh, 30. I can't do that one yet. 2 plus 3 is 5 times 2, 10. Uh, 24 plus 6 is uh, 60. How do I find the area of a rectangle? So the area here is going to be 18. The area here is going to be 72. The area here is going to be 50. The area, oh, don't write so big, Mr. Duke. It's going to be 50. The area here is going to be 6. The area here is going to be 144. What's the heading on this column here, Adrian? You looked like you were dying on me, so I thought I'd pick on you there. Yeah? So this is the linear scale factor. Uh, that means this is what we multiplied our original dimensions by. 2 times 3, 6 by... 9 times 3, 27. What's my linear scale factor in this one, Natasha? So that's going to be times by 2, divide by 3. It's going to be take this number, 6, to multiply by 2 thirds. It's times 2 divided by 3. That's how you multiply by 2 thirds. 4 by... 12 times 2 divided by 3, 8. This one here is a bit trickier. I've got to figure out the linear scale factor. Well, a 5 became a 15, a 10 became a 30. What is my linear scale factor? Three to one, or three. You could write 3 colon 1, or if you just wrote 3, I'm good. Oh, this one's forcing us to go backwards. If I know my linear scale factor is 4 to 1, 
and I finished with a 20 by 44. What was the original dimensions? 5 by 11. Divide to go in the other direction. Oh, which tells me my original perimeter was add them together in times by 2, 16, uh, 32, and my original area was 55. I'll come back to this line because this is dealing with area scale factor. Uh, I'll come back to this line. Uh, I'll come back to this line. Let's fill in the whole first line now. What's the new perimeter? Add those together and times by 2. Uh, 33 times 66. What's the new area? Length times width, 27 times 6, 27 times 3 is 81 times 2, 162, yes? Yeah. Woohoo! I got some math game. Perimeter scale factor, there's two ways to find it. The way to find any scale factor is new one divided by old one. In this case, new perimeter divided by old perimeter. If you go the new perimeter, 66 divided by the old perimeter, what do you get? Now, there's another way to get your perimeter scale factor. Perimeter is the same as the area scale factor. In other words, the perimeter scale factor here is going to be 3 to 1, or 3. You know what the perimeter scale factor is going to be here? 2 to 3, or 2 thirds. You know what the perimeter scale factor is going to be here? 3 to 1. Here it's going to be 4 to 1. Here I don't know yet, here I don't know yet, here I don't know yet. But your linear and your perimeter are the same. Worth having here. Worth memorizing. And again, Nicole, the second way you can find it is to always, you can always go new perimeter divided by old perimeter. If you go new divided by old, you get the scale factor of 3. My new uh, B, uh, 4 by 8, add them together, 12 times 2, 24 and 32. Oh, if I know my linear scale factor, what's my area scale factor? What was the relationship between linear and area? It's not the same. David, squared. What was the stupid way to remember? Square area, whatever works for you, but you got to remember it for the test. So it's not going to be 3 to 1. It's going to be 9 to 1 or 9. How do I square this one? Square the top divided by square the bottom. 4 over 9 or 4 colon 9. Uh, next row, new perimeter 15, uh, let's uh, uh, 40 at 90. And 50, 450. Not keeping you awake too much, am I, Paul? You're good? Slow through? Muda? Mr. Muda? And this young? Ah, I can help with that. Sorry about that at home, folks. I had to keep kid awake. Um, let's fill in this. My area scale, my, sorry, my linear scale factor, which is my perimeter scale factor, is 3 to 1. What's my area scale factor? 9 to 1. And I can find it two ways. I can either square this, or if I go 400 new area, 450 divided by old area, you know what I'll get? Nine. And I'll have to clue in that it's over one. Did you say nine, Mr. Duick? No, Paul, I'm not saying no, I'm saying nine. See, yeah, German saying no is nine, yeah? Okay. So nine or nine to one. Okay? So far, so good. Coming back a little bit. Now they get a little bit trickier. Let's see here. Uh, well, no, I got my new dimensions, 20 by 44. So 20 plus 44 is 64 times 2. It's 128 is my new perimeter. Twice the length. By the way, I am noticing a bunch of people filling in this column. Really? You couldn't find the perimeter of a rectangle? I think you quit. 
I would hope that you would, if you actually thought this quiz was for marks and counted, you'd be going, well, I'll get every single blank that I can instead of just up and quitting when I get to a line that's tough. You want to do that here. Uh, new area, length times width, uh, 20 times 44, 20 times 44, 2 times 44 would be eight, uh, 880. Yes, woohoo. I'm doing math in my head. I'm doing math. Now, my perimeter scale factor is 4 to 1. What's my area scale factor then? What's the other way I could find that? Because what if I didn't give you this? New area divided by old area. I guarantee you 880 divided by 55 is 16. Okay. Now, in G, I gave you the area factor. Okay, if I know the area scale factor, how can I go backwards and find the linear scale factor? Okay, this is where you have to know how to square root. Square root. Okay. So what's the square root of 36? And now I can say, oh, the new dimensions times by 6, times by 6. 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 6 is 18. And now I got two options. Now I could find the new perimeter. What was the original perimeter? 10. What's my scale factor? So I should also be able to go, did I make a mistake here? 2 times 6, 2, two times 5, okay, 5 times 2, that's good. Perimeter 10, oh, times by 6. Yes, there we go. So 60 is this plus this times 2, 60? Yes, it is. What's my new area? I can either go length times width, or since I know my scale factor, it's going to be 6 times 36, which is the same as 12 times 18. 6 times 36, 216? That one I know. Because it's 6 to the third power, and I know my exponents. What's the perimeter scale factor? Same as linear scale factor. I'll probably take both. I'll take 6 or 6 to 1. Certainly if it's a fraction, I'd look for either as a fraction or the colon. Yep. Okay. Uh, area scale factor, 49 to 1. What's my linear scale factor then? 7 which is also my perimeter scale factor. So that means these new dimensions came from this scale factor. What did I start out with over here then if I ended up with a 14 by 28? How do we go backwards? 2 by 2 by 4. Divide, right? If you multiply if you multiply by the scale factor to get that, divide by the scale factor to get back to your original. 2 by 4, which has an original perimeter of 2 times 4, sorry, 2 plus 4 is 6 times 12, original area of 8, and 14 plus 28 is 32, uh, is it 90, no, 84, I think, and 14 times 28, ooh, can I do this one in my head, it's going to be 49 times 4, 50 times 4 is 200, so 49 times 4, 196, 192, that's what I said, listen closely. Three hundred ninety-two. Oh, good gosh, I'm way off. Okay, yeah, now the numbers are getting big enough that I can't do them in my head. All right, trickiest is one of those fractions. Here's my area scale factor. What's my linear scale factor? I'll give you a hint, something over something. Two to three. Which means take this times by two, divide by three. Six times two is 12, divide by three, four by 24 times two, Divide by 3, 16. The new perimeter is going to be 40. This plus this times 2. 
And the new area is going to be 64. Perimeter scale factor, same as linear scale factor, 2 by 3. So the way you'll mark this is each one of these is out of 2. Half mark off for each square that was wrong. That's how I would be counting it on Wednesday. That's how I'll be counting it on the test. Does that make sense? Clearing things up a little bit? This is so much fun, let's keep going! How can I not keep going? This is like a roller coaster ride where you know the ending is better than when you start. Oh boy. Complete the following chart, it says. Okay, I shall. Linear scale factor, six to one. Surface area scale factor. Area square area. What was the volume scale factor? And this you have to memorize. So I've given you the dumb rhyme for area square area, whether it's just straight area or surface area. Volume, you just got to remember, although you can usually figure it out from the units too. What is it? Where did the 216 come from? Six, times six, times six. six to the third power, cubed. Volume is cubed. Volume is linear, cubed. Yep, you're right. 216 to 1, or you could just write 216. So linear 7 to 4, that means 49 to 16. That's your surface area. Uh, cubed, it's going to be 343 to 64, I think. You're going to have a calculator on the quiz, so I'll expect you to actually give me the number. No. No. I won't give you one, Breathmans. I won't give you one. I won't. You won't end up with something like this. That doesn't fit. I've kept them all below a thousand. Well, below. Like in other words, I think the biggest you'll get is probably nine cubed, which is eight hundred and. No, no, sorry. Good gosh, nine cubed is eighty-one times nine is seven. Seven hundred and twenty-nine is probably the biggest thing that'll show up. Well, no, maybe ten cubed a thousand. That's a nice number, but nothing beyond that. You'll be able to evaluate them on your calculator, but you'll have to have a calculator. Oh, now they gave me the square, the square area, the surface area. How can I find the linear? Ashley, what's the linear if this is 9 to 4? How can I go backwards in the other direction? Yeah. Square root, square root. Now that I have linear, how can I find volume? Nine times three. Nine to the third? So I'm going to write in our notes here, 9 to the 3rd over 4 to the, or sorry, over 2 to the, not 9 to the 3rd, 2 to the, it's this, 3 to the 3rd over 2 to the 3rd, which is 27 to 8. That. All right, hot shots. Volume, they gave me the volume scale factor. How do I go backwards? If I square root for area scale factor, what do I do for volume? Cube root. Okay? So, you need to know where your cube root button is. Now, you have some of these memorized. I know some of you do, but just in case, my cube root button is there. Cube root 8, the linear scale factor is 2, area scale factor is 4. Again, they gave me the volume. It's going to be cube root. In fact, it's going to be this. The cube root of 125, 125 Mr. Duke, over 8. Now, how do I do that? Cube root the top divided by cube root the bottom. The cube root of 125 is 5. Cube root of 8 is 2. But I. The. Dos. Do. Tan and binary. Oh, square it, square it to get the square area. Uh, 25 over 4. One over 343. Cube root of 1 is 1. Cube root of 343 is... Okay, you need to know how to use your cube root button. 7 and then 1 to 49. How many marks is this one worth? Six. How many lines are there? 
probably one mark for each line. How many squares in each line did you fill in? Two, you know what? It's a half mark for each square. Yeah. Okay. And then I would normally say, give yourself a score out of 20. I'll be saying that on Wednesday, probably. Turn the page. Okay. Now I'm asking you to take this here table from number three and apply it. Show you what I mean. What's my original surface area in A? 120. What's my original volume in A? 200. Here's the key. What's my linear scale factor? Okay. Let's do the area first. What's the area scale factor if my linear is 3 to 1? 9. Take your original area. That's your new area. Your new area, if you triple everything, your new area is going to be nine times larger than the original. What was the original? 120. New area is going to be 1,080. What about the new volume? What was my linear scale factor? Three to one? She needs some help. Okay. You awake? You sure? Take a jacket off if you fall asleep. The volume scale factor is going to be 27. Take your original volume times by 27. The new volume is going to be 10,800 cubic centimeters. 400 times 27. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. Original volume is 200 times 27. Five thousand. What was it? Five thousand forty. What was your question, Paul? Why is the one scale factor three to one? It just is because I told you that's what it was. We did to get the area scale factor to get to there, and we used it for the uh, nine, nine, times. nine and twenty-seven. Okay, I don't mind re-explaining this. This is tricky. We're good? Yep, yep. Here my linear is 1 to 2. My area is going to be, you know what, I'll just write it really small, 1 to 4. My volume is going to be 1 to 8. So take my original area times by 1, divide by 4. 30. Take my original volume times by 1, divide by 8. Where would the 1 over 8 come from? Cubed. Cubed cubed. Where the 1 over four, 1 to 4 come from? Squared. Squared. Square area. Cubed. Uh, 400 divided by 8 is 200 divided by 4. 50? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, 5400? Not 5040? Because I can't read my own calculator? That makes way more sense to me because 27 times 2 is 54. Bugging me for a second there. Okay, here, I'll start here. What's my new surface area? 5,000. What's my original surface area? What's the area scale factor? How can I, I said there's two ways to find out the area scale factor. It's linear squared or it's always new divided by old. I can go like this, 5,000 divided by 50 and my area scale factor is that. I'm going to write that down here. Area scale factor equals 100. How's that help? If my area scale factor is 100, what's my linear scale factor? Square rooting, right? Going backwards. What's my volume scale factor then? This to the power of what? 3. So if I go 10 cubed, my volume scale factor is going to be 1,000, which means I'm going to take this original volume of 100 and multiply it by 1,000. I'll get a vo new volume of 10,000.
What did they give me here in D? Ah, new volume. So I can find out the volume scale factor, because scale factor is always new shape divided by old shape. The volume scale factor is going to be 125,000, sorry, 12,500 divided by the original volume of 100. The volume scale factor equals 125. How does that help me find the linear scale factor, which is really what I need to do all the rest of them? How do I go backwards if I know the volume scale factor and I want to find the linear? How do we do it on the previous chart? Cube root. What's the cube root of 125? Ah, linear scale factor is going to be 5 to 1. What's the area scale factor going to be? 25 times 80. 25 times 80. Ah, 25 times uh, 200? 2,000? That's what I said. No, please. That's what I said. And you're listening. You're not very, you're not very awake. You just move it. There you go. This is entertaining. I gotta have him here more often because he jumps. This is great. You say a bad word? You didn't say a bad word there. You would never say a bad word right in front of your teacher, would you? Especially ones in German that he probably knows. Nicole, is that okay so far or you have a question? We're good? Okay. Now it gets a bit tougher. Now we're dealing with fractions. Okay. There's my linear. What's my area scale factor? Okay. It's going to be square, square. It's going to be 9 to 4. So take my original area times my 9, divide by 4. What was the original area? 60. Times my 9, divide by 4. New area is going to be 135. If my linear is 3 to 2, what's my volume scale factor? 27 to 8, which means times by 27, divide by 8. 80 times by 27, divided by 8. 270 is my new volume. F. Area scale factor from a 5 to 2 linear is 25 to 4. Volume scale factor is 125 to 8, Mr. Duick. So volume 80 times 25 divided by 4. 500 for area. Volume 120 times 125 divided by 8, 1875. Same marking as before. Six lines, a half mark for each rectangle. Am I wrong? Yo. I don't know. Yes, it is. C is wrong. I need an extra zero. Page candy for you later. 100,000. Thank you. Number 5 is the same as number f the chart, except I just phrased it as a word problem. I gave you the original surface area. I gave you the original volume. I gave you the linear scale factor. What's the surface area scale factor? 9 over 4 or 9 to 4. What's the volume scale factor? Cube cube. 27 over 8 or 27 to 8. What's the new surface area? Take this. Probably yawning now. Times by 9, divide by 4. New surface area, 27. Units, square centimeters. Square area. Yeah. What's the new volume? It's going to be 20 times 27 divided by 8. 20 times 27 divided by 8, and I get 67.5 cubic centimeters, centimeters 
cubed. I was going to scare you while you're blowing your nose and see what happens. Sorry? See that guy? There's my volume scale. What's the original volume? 20 times 27 divided by 8. Did I do that wrong? No, nope, I think I'm good. Right? Times that. Nearly done. Number six. Back. Okay. I'll bring that up later. I will later, but I want to get this done and then people can lawyer with me. No, no. Fall. I'll put it up later. Stick, stick, don't fall back on this one. Don't fall behind on this one. Let's get this, this question here. Number six, when you measure this with your ruler, how long was it? Sorry? Four centimeters, exactly? I tried to be. So, here's our original scale. One centimeter to 54 meters equals, on this particular model, it's four centimeters to X. How would I solve this? Four times 54 divided by one. Uh, four to 216 meters high. Any of you been on the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower? Yeah? Fairly high, nice view. Three point nine. Okay. Four times three point nine is fifty four times. Oh, yeah. Now, give yourself a score at the top, just cause, even though I'm not collecting it. Come lawyer with me, now is the time. What's your question? And the first quiz that I gave you about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Both of those. And, hey, can you all open to page? This thing. Page 55, the practice test. I told you which questions I like. So I'll start out by saying optimistically once again, hey, I wonder if any of you have any questions from the homework from here that you were going, I have no idea how they could get that. Sam, number eight. Okay. Number eight. This is actually very, very similar to the quiz that we just did. They're giving me the linear scale factor. What's the linear scale factor? What do they want me to transfer it to? The, what was the second word you said? Square, yeah. I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna try is this. Linear is surface, uh, sorry, surface area is linear squared. When you go 1.15 squared, what do you get? Sorry, 1.5 squared, what do you get? Oh, turns out, that's the same as a area scale factor of 2.25. Okay. Love to do number nine. Okay. We have one centimeter equals one meter as our scale. And they want us to find the scale drawing height. So here's how I think to this. Scale drawing over real life equals, this is how I think of this, scale drawing over real life. What are they asking me to find, the scale drawing or the real life in the particular question here? Which height are they asking me to find? So look up, scale drawing over real height, scale drawing is the x, it's gonna go there because scale drawing went on top over on this side as well. Real height, now, 24.5 what? What do I have here? This question is going to require me to change this into meters. I'm going to go do that over here. 24.5 feet. On the inside cover of your book, is there a conversion factor for feet to meters? That would be convenient if there was.
There is feet to meters though as well. Yeah. So I'm going to multiply. I want feet to cancel, so it's on the bottom. I want meters on top. What was the conversion factor? One foot equals? 3048. How many meters is 24.5 feet? I think 24.5 times 0 0.3048 divided by 1, which I'm not going to bother doing. Right? And that's the, what we were working on. That's the conversion factor trick. 7.5 7.46, what? 7.6, like that. Now what? Cross multiply. This will give you an answer in meters. By, by the way, what are we being asked to find? The height of his scale drawing? I hope you were clever enough to say there's no way his drawing is 74.7 kilometers high. Like, there, that to me is a silly answer. In fact, you know what? I'm pretty sure his drawing is not 7.5 meters high, because that would be higher than the ceiling. Now, why would B, what, where do you think B came from, the 24.5? Where did they take that number from, do you think? Yeah, sorry? See, I would look at this and say, oh, there's no way the feet is going to be the same as the centimeters, unless it was an incredible fluke. You can actually almost do this question without doing the question by saying, for Pete's sakes, it, it, that's the only answer that makes sense. But I would make a better multiple choice answer than that. Your test has four or five multiple choice at the very, very beginning. Pretty basic. And then the rest is written. Any others? Yeah, love to. Did you try it? Okay. You have to read the little paragraph about, like the picture up above there, right? It looks like we went from 5 to 7.5. So the first thing that I would do, Nicole, is I would think, here's my scale factor. Do I see that answer there anywhere? Not yet. Then I would say, hey, maybe I'll change this to a decimal, see what I spot. Maybe I'll spot something a bit easier. So I would actually go 5 divided by 7.5. And as a decimal, I get 0.6666. Oh, I see that answer now. Where? B, right? If that hadn't worked, I'd probably try going to a fraction Yep. Ah. Oh. Uh, yes, I should have gone. I went old over new. I should have gone new over old. My fault, Nicole. How do we find a scale factor? It's always new one divided by old one. I think I've said that like eight times today, and I, I forgot it. So it's going to be 7.5 divided by 5, which I don't see. But now I would go like this. And I would say, oh, 1.5. I don't see that anywhere, or do I? Is that 1.5? Is that 1.5? Is that 1.5? What about that one? Ah. That's really the one there. Is that okay? Any others? Yep. 14. Okay. What's the linear scale factor? What did you find for number 13? B, you got 50 to 3. The tricky part here is it's meters and centimeters, so it's really 15 centimeters over 250 meters, and then lowest terms, sorry, 250 meters over 
250 centimeters over 15 centimeters, lowest curve 50 over, 50 over 3. That's your linear scale factor. What's your volume scale factor then, if you know the linear scale factor? How do you find the volume scale factor? This you got to memorize. Really, did I say the word area anywhere? Okay, this you absolutely want memorized, okay? And if you are confused, by the way, on unit seven, sorry, lesson seven, on page 48, there they are. How can you find volume if you know linear? Take the linear scale factor and do what? Cubed. This is one of those pages I said was worth dog earing, worth putting a bookmark. There was a reason I had that in my mind. So if I do that, it's going to be 50 over 3 cubed. Cubed times the original. This is just like we did in the chart where if you told me the volume scale factor in the original, I multiplied. Whatever the heck that is, I don't know. Oh, this is in centimeters cubed. This is going to give me an answer in centimeters cubed. 14,000 times 50 cubed divided by 3 cubed. I get that there. That's cubic centimeters. First of all, I'm kind of leaning towards this answer here because it starts out with a 6, 4, 8. How do I go from cubic centimeters to meters? Well, 6, 4, 8, 1, 4, 8. I'll round off to there. It's a bit much writing. This is centimeters cubed. How many centimeters are in a meter? Okay, and this is where I'm going to say, you've all used a meter stick so far in science. How many centimeters are in a meter? Did you not notice? It was worth noticing if you haven't already. It, it, it is 100. How many centimeters in a cubic centimeter? Well, we want centimeters cubed to cancel. We want meters cubed on the top. How many centimeters in wonder? What's right here? Cubed. What's right here? So instead of saying one meter is 100 centimeters, one meter cubed is 100 centimeters cubed. It's going to be that number divided by 100 cubed, which is where the 64.8 comes from. I heard one more question. Thought I did. Or not. 